He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Join me in our call to worship. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Gather today to shout Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Out of the doom of death and despair, victory comes, glory appears. Gather today to shout Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We shall live, witness, and recount the deeds of the God whose love endures forever. We gather today to shout, Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.
For God so loved the world that God gave the only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent not the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Trusting in God's grace, let us join together in saying the prayer of confession. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We ignore the cries of the oppressed and are indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Hear the good news. If we have died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. a moment to pass the peace with one another. I, I, I was ready to cover. Our first reading this Easter morning comes to us from Psalm 144, which can be found in the Pew Bibles in the Old Testament on page 563. When Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob from people of strange language, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why is it, O sea, that you flee, O Jordan, that you turn back, O mountains, that you skip like rams, O hills like lambs? Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water.
musicians, choral and instrumental, thank you. As we turn in Scripture to the Gospel of John to hear the story that we have come to hear today, let us turn our hearts to God in prayer. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The story of the resurrection of Jesus from the Gospel of John, beginning in verse, chapter 20, verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and in Hebrew said to him, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them, that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me tell you about my great aunt Virginia and my great aunt Marilyn. On my grandparents' mantle were two porcelain urns with blue lettering, and one read Virginia, the other read Marilyn. These two spinster sisters with unique names were never discussed in family stories, so I always wondered who they were and how they were related, and why on earth they were on my grandparents' mantle. Much more than that, I was a curious little boy, and I wondered what the remains of dead and cremated people looked like. So one day, around the age of 10, when the room was empty, I crept over to the urns, and I tiptoed onto the hearth, and I carefully and silently stretched up high and took the lid off of Great Aunt Maryland. I looked around and listened. Seeing and hearing no one, I picked up the heavy urn and brought it down so that I could peer into death with my own two eyes. I don't know what I was expecting to see, but I certainly was not expecting to find a single packet of disposable blinker bulbs for Grandma and Grandpa's Christmas tree lights. (laughs) I was equally disappointed that Aunt Virginia was also an empty decorative jar on an old mantle. The Easter message proclaims that when we go looking for death, we may come up empty-handed. 
Mary approached the tomb expecting to find the sight, the smell, and the feeling of death. The disciples ran to the tomb expecting that they would gaze upon God's murdered son. Mary wept because she knew that dead people stay where they were last placed. And there is no reason to find emptiness where one expects the remains of the living, the previously living. The message of the gospel perpetually turns the ways of the world on their head. We don't hit back. We turn the other cheek. We don't resent the request, we walk the extra mile. We don't hold grudges, we forgive and forgive and forgive again. We don't look for the powerful in the seats of honor, we look for those on the margins of society. From his birth in a manger to his death on a cross, Jesus perpetually turned this world upside down. And the greatest of all reversals is the empty tomb where Mary and the disciples expected to find death, but instead it was empty and they found promises of life. By no means do I mean to dismiss the very real ugliness of death. We are not so trite that we can overlook those who have been killed by the pandemic or riots or violence or evil. And we're not saying that every tomb is always empty and death has no effect in our modern world, but rather we are saying that Jesus flipped the expectation of reality on its head. And one day the same will be true for us. One day the graves will be empty, the columbarium open, and the catacombs disappear. As all that represents death is turned into new and abundant life. The day will come when that which happened to Jesus will happen for us as well. And until that time, we celebrate empty tombs, we celebrate death's demise and urns without cremains. It should have been the end of the story when I looked into Aunt Virginia and Aunt Marilyn, but it wasn't the end of the story. The story that I had concocted in my brain about these two spinster sisters and their prominent cremains, it was too good to keep to myself. So I did what a good big brother would do. I convinced my sisters and my cousins that the decorative jars on the mantle contained the remains of our long-dead aunts. And I kept it subtle so that they would not ask questions of anybody. But I kept it alive, and any time we were in the family room, I'd say they should go sit by Great Aunt Virginia and Great Aunt Maryland. The Easter story demands to be told. Now, I convinced my sisters what I convinced them was wrong, and it was a lie, and I apologize, kind of. But but the Easter story is true, it is true, and it demands to be told. Mary ran back to the disciples to tell them of Jesus' miraculous resurrection, and the disciples ran to see what had happened. They all gathered in the city in preparation to tell more and more people about the miraculous foretaste of the resurrection from the dead. The story of Jesus' defeat over death, the story of the empty tomb, the story of God's radical reversal of the world's ways cannot be kept silent. It must be told. It must be shared. We don't need to go door to door and try to convince people that some man 2,000 years ago died and was resurrected. And we don't need to walk around with a good floppy Bible and hit people upside the head. We merely need to live a radically upside down life. Where we do believe that the dead will live, the hungry receive food, the sad comforted, and the lost found. We tell the story of the resurrection by living contrary to the ways that this world expects. Jesus was raised from the dead. The grave is empty. How can we not be changed? How can we not be different? How can we not share this good news in word and deed? This is a story too good not to share. Shortly before her death, I asked my grandmother about the urns, the decorative jars. She looked over and she said, I have no earthly clue what are in those things. We paid some interior decorator to spruce the place up a few decades ago, and that was the stylish thing to do. (laughs) 
I let Grandma know that they were empty except for some blinker bulbs. And then I let her know that I had tortured my sisters and several of my cousins with stories about our long-lost aunts. Grandma scowled at me and chuckled, and my grandpa thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and my sisters still laugh about learning that those containers were indeed empty. Easter, my friends, gives us a chance to laugh at death. I know death isn't necessarily funny because we've seen too much and it is too ugly, but there is a Christian tradition called Rhesus Pascalis, the Easter laugh. Today we are allowed to take a break from the seriousness of life and laugh with God that death or Satan or hell or evil do not have the final say. Today we are allowed to laugh in the graveyard because death has lost its sting. Today is a day when it is okay to joke about great ants who really didn't exist, and we can rejoice and smile and celebrate. Because the one who was crucified is alive, the one who died has laid death in his grave. Our Lord invites us to laugh with Easter joy. Since my first attempt at gazing at death in the urn, I've held plenty of ashes. I've spread them in cemeteries, gardens, front yards. I've stored them in my office as they await their final resting place, and I've interred them with solemn dignity. In a world with more than enough death, upon which we gaze and peer, isn't it beautiful that we can celebrate the promise of life, the resurrection, a story that needs repeating, and laughter? Today is Easter, and we celebrate that fact. My grandfather's funeral was the same weekend I began here at Providence, five months ago. Before he died, Grandpa sent me a package, and there, wrapped up tight, were the urns of Great Aunt Virginia <laughs> and Great Aunt Maryland. They sit on the bookcase at home, blinker bulb still in Great Aunt Virginia. And I bet you can guess what I told my daughters when they asked about <laughs> the new decorations. My friends, the tomb is empty. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
Please remain standing as we join in the affirmation of faith. Sorry. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition. Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain, giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. You may be seated. Please join me in prayer. O oh God, early in the morning when the world was young, you made life in all its beauty. You gave birth to that which we know and to that which is unknown. For this gift we give you thanks and praise. O oh God, early in the morning when the world least expected it, a newborn child lying in a manger announced that you had come, that you were Emmanuel, God with us. And early in the morning, surrounded by religious leaders, anxious statesmen, and silent friends, you shouldered and suffered the cross. No words can express, nor can we fully understand the gift we have been given. And early one morning, a voice in the yard and footsteps in the dew proved that you had risen, that you had come back to those and for those who had forgotten and denied you. Gracious God, you are our hope, the hope for our world. In your dying for us, you accepted the pain and the hurt of all creation. The arm, your arms on the cross stretched out across the broken world in reconciliation. O oh God, we are an Easter people, for we know that each dawn is a resurrection gift, a possibility to deepen relationships, a chance to forgive ourselves and others, to make peace and to share love. God, we know that in every, every sunrise rolls back a stone and lets the alleluias loose. Awaken us to the, the delights we overlook in our routine haste and worry. Show us uncontrived beauty in ordinary places. Give us energy for change and show us solid ground in the midst of a breaking and unstable world. And help us to leave behind like empty grave cloths all the cowering and manipulation in which our world has schooled us so well. Help us to step forth full of care, courage into a new day, a new season of growth and grace, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. God, there are those among us right here and right now who need your healing and your comforting touch there are those who have found themselves the accidental victims of circumstances that are beyond their control. Some who are heartbroken over a loved one's pain that they are powerless to lift or even to share. Still, there are others who were weary beyond words, drained from the struggle of getting through one difficult day after another. God, we pray for all people that, may, that they may stand on a firm foundation of faith that lets all of us know that Easter always comes, that Good Friday does not last forever, that suffer, suffering and death do not have the last word. God, we pray for those today who are mourning. We pray for the Ford family, the Despirito family, the Hufford family, and the Miller family. Today of all days, may they re be reminded of life eternal 
and that as you hold their loved one, that you also hold them. God, we pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus, who, sa who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, a warm welcome to all of you on this Easter Sunday. I know that we have many visitors and family members. We are so thankful that you have chosen to spend Easter Sunday here at Providence Presbyterian Church. I want everybody to turn just a moment and wave to those who are online. Welcome, members and visitors. We're really glad to, that you are watching, and we wish we could see you. I have just a couple of announcements. Our church is a very, very busy church. Next weekend, next Saturday, I'm sorry, Sunday, we will have our Rise Against Hunger event. I am hoping that we package 20,000 meals. I think we're almost there volunteer-wise, so that's next Sunday. We are also um, a, an Earth Care Congregation and Creation Care Sunday is coming up. So there's an announcement about seedlings in the bulletin. I'll point you in that direction. And then next Sunday, as always, in uh, our church is Communion Care Sunday. So you know, we've gone back to having you bring things for the pantry into the sanctuary so our kids can uh, put them by the table. So bring your canned goods next week, and we want to invite everybody to come back next week. Well, normally I introduce the offering with saying what's going on, uh, certain things in the congregation, but I think you hit, heard just about four of them. We have lots of people who volunteer. We have m much generosity in this congregation. If you'd like to give to this church in any way, if you'd like to give monetarily, there's a basket. You can give online, whatever way you want to give. We will receive it and use it out in the world to share God's word. Thank you. Let us pray. Gracious God, for faith and hope and love, for life eternal, for the abundance you have given us each here today, help us to share what we've given back to you out into the world, sharing your love and hope and grace in the ways that we have learned it for ourselves. For we pray this in your son's name. Amen.
You are invited to join us for brunch in Mission Hall uh, as we break bread and fellowship and celebrate the resurrection together. My friends, when we gaze to look upon death, we see that the tomb is indeed empty. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Now we go out into the world to proclaim that story, to laugh and to celebrate. And as we go, go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Go in God's peace. Amen. All right, my people. It is time to constitute our Easter pop-up choir. Those of you who wish to join us in the singing of the Alleluia Chorus from Handel's Messiah, please come forward. We have music for you. Basses and sopranos from that side. Tenors and altos to that side. You will get music and walk around you. Don't jump on the ship and have no